Hey adventurers, welcome to upstate New York. Now it might be a little difficult to see, but if you go back into this little sun patch here, you can see a garter snake. This is an excellent first herp of the day, and we've got some exciting things in store for you, so stay tuned. We were lucky enough to visit upstate New York in the summertime when the water is flowing and the wildlife is abundant. Let's take a look at all these creatures we found. Check it out, peeking out right there looking at us is a common garter snake. And out here, this is the eastern variety, the eastern garter snake subspecies. You can see he's got some nice red colors. Oh, you can see his whole body going up there. So really cool. Oh, he's coming down towards us. This is nice. A really excellent way to start our adventure. Looks like he's on the hunt for something. I'm hearing some frogs in the area too. Um, there's some bullfrogs that are calling. Maybe a green frog too, so maybe he's looking for a froggy. <laughs> yes! Wow! All right, you can't get better than that. This is literally the first log I have flipped today, and right there is a nice big salamander. This is, whoa, let's not get away already, but that is a northern slimy salamander. Let's pick him up and take a closer look. All right, this is incredible. This guy is squirming a lot, so we're going to have to do a bit of work to keep him nice and moist. But just in the background here, that is that same garter snake that we showed you earlier. Uh, he's moved down. He was just up on the hill there, and so nice. Oh, he's crossing the path now. So cool to see that snake up and close while I still have this slimy in hand. And I think he's on his way to the... Uh, to the water you can see that's where all the water is and where garter snakes really like to be but let's get a nice shady spot to look a little closer at this guy and see he's got a really nice pattern now these slimy salamanders are kind of miserable to find um, and pick up because you can see all this mud and dirt is sticking to my hand, and that's because of the slime that this guy produces. But still really cool to see. It is the first slimy salamander that I've seen this year. It's the first time that I've really been in slimy salamander habit habitat as well. And uh, really, what an excellent way to get two, two new species for the year uh, back to back. And uh, like I said, literally in the same shot. So... Cool. Okay, we need to give this guy a rinse, in my hand a rinse, before we put him back under his log. And that one's right, this one here. All right, thanks, buddy. See ya. Do you got room to go under? Okay. All right, we got a nice little hopper here. Look at that, nice and green, and you can see a nice dorsolateral fold going down there. That means that this is a green frog. There he goes. Excellent species to add, and we've been hearing some of these guys calling too, so. But they're a pretty common species. We won't spend much time with it. Time to find more. Oh, look at that. I see a little tail sticking out there. This is another, whoop, where'd he go? There he is. Another slimy salamander, northern slimy salamander. Oh, more and more hidden. Well, we already saw, we already saw one of these. So I just wanna make sure we don't squish him when we put the, the log back. Ah, oh, he's actually buried. He went down pretty quickly. It's a lot of leaf litter here. Okay. Well, I've lost him already in this leaf litter, but that's okay. Like I said, Rody saw one. He'll be fine. Whoa, okay. Well, these guys are, seem like they're going to be quite abundant. Here is another one. This one is a lot smaller and has like gold flecks to it. Oh, he's climbing, climbing down a hole. Well, that was another slimy salamander. Very cool. Let's go find some more. Toad. Check it out. 
that's the toad Tatiana found. Now, they have a couple species of toad out here, so we need to take a close look, figure out exactly what he is. All right, here is a nice close-up of that toad that Tatiana had found. Now you can see on the belly, he's got some speckling throughout. Turn him around. There we go, lots of speckling there. This is a clear sign that this is an American toad, um, or at least uh, an American hybrid. Uh, usually you also have to look at a couple other field marks. It doesn't look like he has too many spots, too many warts in those black spots, just about one for each. That's another good sign for American toad. And, uh, and usually you wanna look at where the, um, the sort of cranial ridges are, but it's really hard to see on this guy. So pretty sure this is an American toad and an excellent, an excellent toad to add to our list. And a nice job, Tatiana, and a good find. All right, here's okay. here's all eagle eyes. She likes to be, she wants everybody to know when she's out on the adventures. Just spotted another toad. Um, now, like I said before, we need to take a close look to figure out exactly what species it is, because there are two in the area. So, here, toad, whoop. Yep, oh, here we go, similar. Belly pattern with speckling. That is an American toad. Back up just a little bit. Nice. Oh. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. I just, we almost walked by this snake, but he moved and here he goes. This is another garter snake, a bit thicker than the, than the last one. And I think he's probably just gonna hide under this log and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, there you go. Get a nice close-up look at him. And he's just beautiful. They have these nice sort of maroon colors to them. And you know, something that's very common with garter snakes is you see that have this dorsal stripe. Our California ones are some of the few that don't, but most of the garters do have a dorsal stripe like that. All right, well, we happened to be on a very popular hiking trail out here and didn't really expect to find much, but Tatiana just scooped up this little frog. You want to tell us about it? It's a green frog. That's it. Nice. Yeah, you can see that dorsolateral fold. This is a pretty small one, but nice job, Tatiana. Ready? Yeah. Bye-bye, fella. So Tatiana just spotted this lovely little frog, and at first I thought it was a leopard frog, but this is actually a pickerel frog. If you look, those spots on the back are more sort of rounded rectangular, and they're very paired. So there's a bunch in a row together. And so that's one of the sort of field marks that we need to see uh, to make this a pickerel and not a leopard frog. <laughs> All right, well, Tantiana is just catching everything today. She's a little bit farther up on the trail than me. So this lovely fellow was also her find. And now you can see he's mostly unspotted, but a couple black spots there. And so, you know, I'm not 100% sure if this is an American toad or a Fowler's toad, but we have a couple other field marks to look at. If you look at those dark spots, there's only a single wart. And then if we, if we look at these, um, they have these little, these large, um, tubercles right here on the back legs there and that's another sign that this is an American toad and not the similar Fowler's toad. So really nice to see that guy. We'll just leave him here. This is where we picked him up from and uh, we'll continue on our way. All right check it out right there. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. You can see a nice old painted turtle. Here he is moving around a bit. That's cool. Looks like he's trying to maybe find a better better place to, to take a little bit of a rest. Um, but nearby, in this pond, we're also seeing a couple frogs. We have, um, we've been hearing both bullfrogs and green frogs, um, but so far we've only been able to view a couple of the bullfrogs. So if I zoom out just a little bit, come on over here. Right there is a nice big bullfrog. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit better focus. There we go. Nice big bullfrog there. You can see that he doesn't have that dorsolateral fold that goes back like the green frogs that we've been seeing. <laughs> well, it is turning out to be a very snaky day. Look at that. We've got one more garter snake. This is a common garter snake as well. 
same thing that we've been seeing all day. Um, it doesn't quite have the same pattern as the last ones though, which is kind of interesting. This doesn't really have the, um, the burgundy sort of sides to it. Um, it's more familiar with what I've seen many times uh, with sort of these Eastern garter snakes. So cool to see, one more for the list. Well, we have some gorgeous habitat, so I figured I'll let you see what he looks like a little bit closer. And you can see that blue pattern, which is really nice. Hey, don't go away just yet. And they're doing those classic tail licks. Now, garter snakes are known to musk, and he did a little bit earlier. It was pretty bad, but um, I don't smell it too much anymore. This guy's pretty small, and so their musking abilities are a bit more manageable. So, need to get a close look at this guy. Oop. And uh, we will set him free. Uh, probably not so that he falls off that cliff. I'm just gonna move him um, over the side and, and uh, let him go on his way. All right, buddy. See ya. Just crawl into the, the grasses right there and you'll be safe. Cool. All right, look at this guy. This is one of the Desmoganthus salamanders, I think. Um, it's missing its tail, so not sure what happened to it. No tail in here. Now there are two species in the area, I think Northern Dusky and Allegheny Mountain. So we might have to take a closer look and see which one it is. All right, well, I believe this guy is the Allegheny Mountain Dusky Salamander. And um, it's hard to see the field marks because uh, they are so small, but you can see there's a light line that extends from the back of the eye to the back of the jaw. And that uh, that basically tells us that this is part of the, the uh, Dusky Salamander genus. And now, unfortunately, one of the field marks we would look at is the tail, but if we look at the stomach, it's fairly dark. Um, fairly dark stomach and no spotting or modeling on it. So I think, um, and, and if we saw that, that would be a good sign for the northern, um, the northern dusky salamander. And that's why I think this is Allegheny Mountain. But he's probably had a tough day losing his tail at some point. So we're gonna give him a bit of a rinse and then let him get back to doing his thing. Well, these dusky salamanders are the hardest to identify. They're pretty small, their coloration is extremely variable, and there is often a lot of overlap between species. So it's very easy to make a mistake and identify these guys incorrectly. Luckily, they all have that line going from the eye to the jaw, and so it's really easy to place them in the correct genus. So we did a little bit more searching in this area, and we actually found a lot more of these salamanders. And at the time, I wasn't sure if it was Northern Dusky or Allegheny Mountain Dusky, but I'm, I think with additional resource that these are probably all Allegheny Mountain. And in fact, we even have one that we found here that actually had a lot of coloration on it, uh, which is a, a stronger sign that it's Allegheny Mountain. And we had a bunch that we flipped and really it was, seemed like every single rock in this little area, they, they started to be a little bit abundant before we headed out. So... A little difficult to tell, and I'm still not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that these were all Allegheny Mountain. Whoa, we got one more. This little spot is really nice. If you look, that, uh, that long flat rock right there, that's where we just had the last dusky salamander. And so here's another. I'm gonna assume that this is exactly the same as the last one we saw, because it looks the same at least from this side. So we'll just scoot him out a little bit so we can put his rock back go go on buddy and then rock back in place and then all right turn around come on come on back oh there he goes back under to where he was before okay look at this guy i was just about 
we're staying at our Airbnb and I was just about to walk up here, this little pond that's here, to check out the green frogs that are calling. And I see this massive ringneck snake here. Look at the size of that. Here, let me see if I can rejigger some things and uh, give you a sense. Like, there's my hand. You know, it is two and a bit hands length. So pretty cool. Obviously, you've seen these before. They're pretty easy to identify. That ring around the neck is our one of our major field marks, but just a really massive size ring necks. <laughs> All right, before I let this snake go, I want to show you. Uh, you can see must on me a little bit, but that other underbelly is bright yellow. And some of them in your home are more oranges in color, but they're really, really pretty snakes. But he's just wrapped around my thumb like that. Uh, he smells a bit, but that is really a pretty and awesome snake. Okay, let me let him go. Bye-bye, buddy. Oh, he might be stopping there, but I want to go check out those frogs. So see you later. All right, here's a little baby uh, green frog. You can see, pretty small compared to my hand, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they breed in that pond there. Um, so cool. <laughs> well, wasn't expecting that, but this is another American toad. And uh, it's kind of crazy because we are really just like a couple feet away from the door to our Airbnb. Um, so we had that, that ringneck snake, this, uh, this toad, and of course a number of green frogs. So that's pretty cool. And there's some <laughs> worm-like, oh, that's a snail, um, or a slug actually that's on top of him. Maybe he's waiting for it to fall. So pretty cool. All right, well here is that green frog that uh, that I've been hearing. You can probably hear it in the background here. It's hard to make sure that we're both in the shot together, but there he is. Uh, not quite as exciting as that ring neck, but still a nice way to round out the night here. And uh, yeah, well if you like this kind of content, please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Greg Schechter, this is Schechter Natural History. This is a little green frog, and we'll see you in the field.